In this video, I am going to be solving some questions related to transformation matrices. Now, I'm basically going to be solving full length transformation questions. And when we're doing that, we're going to come across some parts which require us to use transformation matrices. And that is how I'm going to cover that, that very important concept. Okay, so this is a question from October, November 2018, paper two, variant two. And let's get straight to it. So it says here, triangle A is drawn on the grid, all right? Triangle P, transformation P, sorry, is represented by the matrix minus two, zero, zero, minus two. P maps triangle A onto triangle B, draw and label triangle B. All right, so there are two ways to approach this question, okay? One is that you take the vertices, you take the coordinates of the vertices of this triangle, okay? All three vertices and you multiply them by minus two, zero, zero, minus two, or if you if you really understood transformation matrices i would suggest not to do that okay why because it's going to take a lot of time and when you're multiplying matrices it's likely that you will make an error okay i mean it's not um, it's not likely that you'll make an error actually wrong choice of words what i mean is that the since it requires a lot of working the chances of making an error will be relatively higher okay now an easier way to do this question is, and it's a, it's a two marks, so say, I mean, honestly, you shouldn't, you shouldn't be doing a lot of working for this, okay. So an easier way to do this question is that you look at the matrix, which is minus two, zero, zero, minus two. You realize what the matrix, the transformation this matrix is representing, and you apply that transformation, okay. Now, I know that sounds easier said than done, but it, act, it actually becomes easier given that you have a solid understanding of transformation matrices, okay. So this matrix looks very similar to k zero zero k and what exactly does this matrix represent what transformation does this matrix represent it represents enlargement with k as your scale factor so this basically means that all i need to do to triangle a in order to obtain triangle b is to enlarge it by scale factor minus two and we all know what happens and center origin by the way and we all know what happens when you have to enlarge a, a triangle with center origin as any scale factor all you got to do is you got to take the vertices and multiply it by the scale factor which in this case is minus two so two comma one but i multiplied by minus two is going to become minus four and minus two right so there you go and then three comma one is going to become minus six and minus two and two comma three is going to become minus four and minus six and there you have it we have successfully applied this matrix and obtained triangle b once you've done once you've drawn it make sure that you label it also and there you go two marks in the bag the next part says describe fully the single transformation now we've already understood what this transformation is okay so this shouldn't be uh, too difficult so this transformation is basically enlargement now, if you've said enlargement, you need to describe what the scale factor is and what the center is. So scale factor minus two and center origin, done. Write down the ratio of triangle A is to the area of triangle B. Okay, so when you've enlarged a triangle, what you get as a result is a triangle similar to the previous one. So in short, triangle A and triangle B are basically two similar triangles. And when that happens, when you have two similar triangles, you can use the formula a1 upon a2 let me write that down over here a1 upon a2 is equals to l1 upon l2 the whole thing square where l1 and l2 are basically lengths corresponding lengths of the two triangles respectively so we have to take length of triangle a as the numerator and length of triangle b in the denominator so i'm going to take the base which is one and i'm going to take the base of triangle b which is two so all i need to do is one upon two the whole thing squared which means one upon four or if you want to give this in ratio it becomes one is to four now one way of doing this would would have been to calculate the axial areas and then dividing them and giving them as a ratio in its simplest form so that's also totally acceptable okay here's part b part b says transformation q is represented by the matrix one zero zero minus one q maps b onto c draw and label triangle c okay again one way of doing this would be to multiply all the vertices of triangle b with this particular matrix and another would be to actually identify what this transformation this matrix is representing and then applying that and you know i'm going to use that approach so how exactly do we identify what this matrix is representing well the way to do that is fairly simple it does require a lot of practice don't get me wrong so here's what you need to do our starting points are always one zero and zero one right one comma zero and zero comma one right Here's A and here's B. Let's write that down. A, B, 
1001. Okay, so now because of some transformation, we don't know what that is, but we'll figure it out eventually. What happened was is that I'll use a different color for this, okay? A remained exactly where it was, okay? Nothing happened to A, but B somehow turned, B, B somehow ended up at 0, comma minus 1. Okay, now what you gotta do is you gotta stop and think. When exactly does this happen? A remains as it is, that means it's the invariant point, and B is, B moved downwards exactly the same distance it was upwards from the x-axis. So that basically means it is a reflection along the x-axis, and that is exactly why A didn't, nothing happened to it, because it was on the x-axis, and as we know, in reflection along the x-axis, all the points lying on the x-axis are invariant. I think I've said x-axis way too many times, but yeah, you get the point. So what happens is that a prime and b prime are, nothing happens to a, and b prime turns out to be 0 minus 1. So now we know very well that this matrix is basically representing reflection along the x-axis. Again, I've said x-axis. Okay, so what that what that basically means is that what exactly do I need to do to triangle B in order to get triangle C? I need to reflect it along the x-axis. So that's exactly what I'm going to do now. I'm going to go back. I'm going to look at triangle B. I'm going to see its coordinates and I'm going to reflect them along the x-axis. Now, reflecting any point or an object along the x-axis is quite easy. All you got to do is you just got to change the sign of the y-coordinate. So minus 4 and minus 2 is going to become minus 4, positive 2. Minus 6 and minus 2 is going to become minus 6 and positive 2. And minus 4 and minus 6 is going to become minus 4 and positive 6. And there you have it, folks. We have successfully obtained triangle C. And once you've done that, make sure that you label it. And that's exactly what I'm going to do now. There you go. Okay, now, now part C is a slightly different question. We haven't encountered questions like these uh, at all. So it says transformation y is represented by the matrix 1003. Now you may be thinking, okay, what does that mean? We've never seen a matrix that looks like this. And you're right, you're absolutely right. And you don't even need to know what this matrix represents. Okay, I'll tell you why. So according to this question, y, which is this transformation, maps A onto D. You need to find the matrix that represents the transformation that maps triangle D onto triangle A. So what this basically means is that this matrix takes A and turns it into D. You need to come up with the matrix that when takes that when it's applied to D, it brings it back. Okay. Now let, let me tell you what I mean. So let's say we have a number five. When I multiply it by three, I get fifteen. Now if I ask you, what should I multiply fifteen by so I can bring five back? Okay. So what, what am I? What, what exactly am I asking? Fifteen times three is fifteen. Sorry, five times three is fifteen. I'm looking for a number that I can multiply fifteen with so I can get five back. Okay. That means I need to multiply it by 1 over 3, okay? And 1 over 3 is basically what, if you think if you think about it, is basically the inverse of 3, okay? 3 to the power minus 1 is 1 over 3. So here's how this works. So we have y, which when we apply to, which is when, uh, which is when it's applied to a gives us d, all right? So what we'll actually, one, it's better if I write it like this. Okay, so a nicer way of looking at it would be that A, when undergoes transformation Y, turns into D. Now what we're looking for is that what transformation should D undergo so that we can get A back? And the answer to that would be Y inverse. So that means all you gotta do is, in short, find the inverse of this particular matrix. And that's exactly what I'm gonna do. Now if you remember the formula for calculating the inverse, that's great, if you don't, Nothing to worry about. I'll write it over here. 1 upon AD minus BC, DA minus B, and minus C. Okay, so 1, 0, 0, 3. Now let's find out the inverse of this. Remember, this is Y, and we're looking for Y inverse. So 1 upon, 1 times 3 is 3, so 0 times 0 is 0, so 3 minus 0 will remain 3. And A and D are going to swap, swap places, and B and C, uh, we need to change the signs of them, so nothing really happens because they're both 0. So this becomes 1 upon 3 times 3, 0, 0, 1. If you really want, I mean, if you want, you can multiply all the elements by 1 upon 3, but it makes no difference to your final answer. You can write, the, write it as this also, totally acceptable. 1 upon 3 times 3, 0, 0, 1. And there you have it. I hope this concept is understood well by all of you. And that's all for this video. I'll see you guys in the next one. Until then, take care.